so the, so, the, so the gay guys will pull up. Damn much. And I'm where would they be pulling up to? Like just on the street? Yeah, they pull up by here. And time. what would they say? Oh, uh, that gay shit. What's up? What you got going on? You know, and you know what it is. But what I got going on is tricking you out some money, so I can get me some more crap. How much money? So you was like a mule, like a. a I you put me in the car, man. Like it's real. I don't know if we should do this on YouTube. Well, I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's old, old, right? Yeah, well, so, I so back in the 80s, man. <laughs> no, so back in the 80s, man. Um, do you say that you also have HIV? I don't have HIV for uh, 38 years. For 38 years? No. How did you, when did you, so. I never had pool blown AIDS. Right. Now, one thing about it, let me tell you this much. How did things go left, man? How did we go from having a good childhood, private school, college, all this stuff? Um, How did things go left? How do we get from there to like selling drugs? Uh, basically. All right, here we go. Tell me when I come out. Here we go. Tell Let's me when I come out, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? 2024 is starting off on fire. Make sure you tap that notification bell so you can join all the lives. The comment section be lit. And definitely make sure you tap in with me on Instagram, at Marcus the Interviewer. Be on the lookout for all new wrinkles in the content. And of course, the same old interviews that you love. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? So guys, this is uh, kind of a special deal, right? So um, the guy that I work out with, man, shout out to KD with the muscle. Um, you know, he always bringing every, all the good people together. Guy that I work out with named E, um, AKA The Cut Doctor on Instagram, um, approached me and he wanted to, oh look, she did an interview with me. I remember her. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's probably mad I cut her off, but um, anyway, so, uh, you know, my guy E, man, he uh, approached me, he wanted to come out and give haircuts to the homeless. Um, so we're about to link up, I'm about to pull up on him right now. Um, he is super big on Instagram guys. So he's the cut doctor on Instagram. He basically is the man. He's the, he's that guy Okay, so he's that guy. So let me see if I could fit in here So this is his uh, thing right here. And so we're about to um, see if we could uh about to see if we could uh, you know, just kind of do some good stuff and You know get these guys a couple haircuts, you know all that good stuff, right? All right, man, so so we just pulled up man. So you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna come out here and this is gonna be something that we're gonna do on a continuous basis. So, you know, we're gonna do two or three folks, but you're gonna be the first one, man. So, um, you ready to get you a little little haircut, make you a little makeup? I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, man. All right, so this is E, guys. This is E, this is the cut doctor right here. The cut doctor guys, in the building. this is a wizard. You're literally looking at a wizard, guys. I, I Man, I shit you not, okay? Yeah. Like, he's gonna be humble about it. But I'm telling y'all, this man transforms people. He ain't your average barber, yeah. okay? He yeah, is literally the best of the best. This guy gets flown out to cut people's hair. He gets flewed out, okay? So um, so this is a big deal, guys. So, um, so you know, you, you're about to get cut by a master, man. All right. All right, how you feel about that? I feel great, man. You know, I started my job Thursday. I, I need a cut. I need, need a little cut, right? Yeah. All right, man, let's do it, man. Let's do it. So hold on. We going on the bus, baby. All right. Here we go. Tell me when I come out. Here we go. Tell Let's me when it. I come out, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Hey, how y'all doing? All right, man. So we had to get straight with the people, but so how you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. I just uh, I'm just real grateful, man. Real grateful. Okay, so. Let's talk about it, man. So, you know, you wanted to tell me what your story was. So, I'm going to do the interview with you, okay? All right. Same All right. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews. Out here with the out here with the special, guys. So, so y'all saw at the beginning and everything like that. So, this guy's about to get cut up. We got my boy E here, of course. Um, so, so listen, man. So, are you homeless? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. So, how old are you, man? I'm actually 59 years old. 59? And so, how long have you been homeless? Well, actually, um... About seven years. Seven years? What was it that happened seven years ago that caused you to become homeless? Uh, probably drugs. What drugs? Crack, alcohol. Okay. So one day, seven years ago, you had a roof over your head. The next day, you didn't. What happened in those 24 hours? Well, let's say this. Um, first of all, I'm a high school graduate, college graduate. Um, How you want me to do your hair? I don't want to interrupt you. I want a fade, man. I want a fade. Tilt, tilt fade. Pre-blend, tilt fade, skin. You know what I'm saying? A skin fade or a tilt fade? Uh, skin. Skin fade. Yep. Yeah. Right, I 
Yeah, but I want the hell to start about right here. I don't know what you call it. I got you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyway, okay. so so um, so look, we ain't trying to get all the right, right. high school and college. So I had, I had, I had a place. Okay. Uh, you know what comes behind that is the drugs and alcohol. Uh, stop paying the light bill. Stop paying. Okay. The stop paying the bills and so, basically got so it. so basically you know then when you get put out you get put out. I get it. And it, it's it's uh ain't no fun when rabbit got to go on so uh. Then you become homeless when you don't got no lease. So I ain't got no lease in my name, so I become homeless. So my first if my first uh I think my first encounter sleeping on the street, man, was uh I was trying to find somewhere to go and I kept sleeping in Grady Hospital, uh take advantage of people, spend night over their house, you know, stuff like that. How would you take advantage of people? Uh, you know, uh you got punks pulled up, man. You know I ain't gonna give them no dick, but you got punks pulled up. They give you that good game. Nigga, I need someone to sleep tonight. I'll go over there and talk all night. You can't get no air. <laughs> so, you know so I need someone to sleep. So, and I need some more money for some crap. So hold on. So the guys, I'm so, the, so, the, so the gay guys will pull up. Damn much. And okay. where would they be pulling up to? Like just on the street? Yeah, they pull up out here all And time. what would they say? Uh, that gay shit. What's up? What you got going on? You know, and you know where it is. But what I got going on is tricking you out some money. So I get me some more crack. How much money? Nigga, like, well, you know, they can get they sucker for five or ten dollars. But you know, by me being the host I am, you know, I'm trying to get done, eat, I'm trying to go in your wallet, I'm trying to get to your house to see what you got in there for me to steal. So listen, I, I hear what you're saying, but. And it's true. So, I get it, right? But some of what you're saying is kind of like not. So because, I mean, here's the thing. So you saying that you never did any of that stuff? So you ain't did no gay shit? Oh, no? I ain't had no gay No, no, I don't do that. You, I, I asked you that. I asked did, you, did, did, you, did you touch it? I asked, did you ever oh, no. do? You didn't do anything. Ever, ever do what? Any yeah. of the any homosexual acts? Oh no, none of that. I'll play. I'll play all the way to the end. Then I gotta go. And so, what? How would they feel about that? I mean, nothing they can feel about it because you know, then you put the fear, then you put the fear of God in them, and then you be ready to beat them up. Okay, so you would get a little bit aggressive of if course. they got any type of right, way or anything right, like that. You know, and I always play the, I always play the, the long road like. You know, you know, we ain't been do this first night, man. I just met you. Like, 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 let me get your number. You hit him with, you know, the, yeah, you hit him with the finesse. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we got to. You feel me? Makes sense. Like, why would you? If you pick me up and want to have sex with me tonight, that means you did this shit all week long. Like, bro, come on, man. Let's not do this. Let's get. Let's build a relationship. Oh, shit. Hey, man. <laughs> okay, so you was finessing the gay guys out here in Atlanta. All day. Okay, okay. Now, so. you don't finesse them like that. I don't look for them. Right. If they pull up, if they pull up, up, then you gonna and I'm hurt. So would you act, would you fight. be acting like kind of gay or would you be acting straight? Oh, uh, I'm straight. Period. No, I'm but, saying would you be acting boy, straight? No, ain't no, no, ain't no ass straight. I'm straight. Okay. But they won't straight, boy. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect you to say that, man. I mean, so okay. you know, they, they won't straight, boy. But you know what? The niggas watching the YouTube channel might just be one of them. Yeah, they did very well. Could be. Right. All right. All right. So. Okay, so as far as the homelessness goes, right? So you've been homeless for about seven years. Yeah. Um, are you still in the middle of your addiction? I am. Okay. And so as far as it goes, like, you know, as far well, as the crack goes. It's not as, my addiction really not as bad as it used to be. You know, I get it, but you don't have to make us, we, we'll, we'll tap in all that. Yeah. But I want to know, as far as the crack goes, what age were you the first time you smoked crack? Probably in my 30s. In your 30s? Probably. And so, what was it that made you decide to do that? I used to sell a lot of drugs, and um, I remember the day I smoked. I tell this story to a lot of people. Um, I told this, I told this lady in, in the project. I'm like, look at this shit, man. Y'all bring a nigga everything. Y'all bring them food stamps, y'all TVs, you know, the, 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 the children Christmas clothes. I said, man, give me that shit. Let me show y'all. Oh lord, I can smoke this shit. Famous last words. Right. <laughs> and guess what? I hear that shit, and all I remember was saying, "Woo wee!" That's all I remember. And I sat there and I smoked almost half of my product. <laughs> and then I got angry with everybody. I got my pills and put everybody out of the house. And before you knew it, it was like uh, I was selling and smoking, selling and smoking. And then you know, up to the races, uh, no more selling for me. What year was mm. that when you started? When, when you when you started? We say it was twenty nine, so it was about you no, say about thirty no, years no. ago, right? When, when I started. When I started smoking, probably, I think it was like, I want to say 2002, 2003. 
Okay, so, I mean, because you said 30 years ago, but now you're saying about 20 years ago? Well, I mean, when I started smoking. Right, yeah. smoking, right, right, okay, okay, I get it, I get I it. I can't remember, man. No, 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 neither here nor there, neither here nor there. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, so. But it okay. been too long either way it go. Yeah, listen, I mean, a, a couple decades worth of smoking crack, it definitely, uh, definitely is a good amount of time, so. Right, right, right. All right, so, um, okay, so do you have any kids? I do. Okay, I how many? three wonderful children. Okay. I lost two, of course. So you had three and you only have one left, or no, you have five I and have you five have three left? I got two. Okay, okay. Um, how old is the oldest? Uh, 40. 40? That's, that's how old I am, man. How young is the youngest? <laughs> uh, 26. 26? Okay, and so do they know that you're like in this position uh, of homelessness and everything? Well, uh, yes. Well, actually, my kids support me. Um, what I mean by support me, they love me. I'm, I'm, I've been a great dad. Uh, my daughter my daughter owns her own blue salon in East Point. Um, my son... He got his own car watch. I have another son that play basketball. Um, professional basketball. semi pro. Um, all my kids. Is he play. tall? Yeah. Because you're short. Well, I mean, hey, he, he's taller than me. <laughs> he, he sure is yours, man. I'm, I'm positive. <laughs> I got to ask, man, because, you know, hey, be man. like Michael Jordan is his dad, right? <laughs> I'm he, he's all of me, man. All of me. I could dig it. I could dig uh, it. I, I mean, I was an athlete. I was McDonald's All American 1982 at my high school. Well, did you go to high school in Atlanta? I did. What well, high school, man? I went man? to the K-Dot high school. You went to the K-Dot high school? Shout out to the Bulldogs, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Ball wild, man. So, wait, so that's where you lived? You lived on the east side? I, I, live on, I used to live on the east side. Okay. Okay, man. Shout yeah. out to the east side, man. Yeah. Shout it out. Sorry? You already know, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, man. So, okay. So, let's just uh, let's start from the beginning. So, yo, so you grew up here um, in Atlanta on the east side. Growing up, did you have both mom and dad in the household? I did. Okay, were they married? They were. Okay, and so, you know, growing up, would you say you had like a fairly normal childhood? Great, great childhood. Awesome. You know, I went to private school before I went to the Cato. I had an awesome, awesome, awesome childhood. And so, um, obviously, uh, did you graduate high school? Of course. Um, any college after that? I did. Okay, what school? What college? I went to Culinary Institute of America, Inglewood, California, Hyatt Park. Okay, also, you say Hyatt Park? Hyatt Park, California. Okay, okay. So Also, 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 I went to uh, AU Center. And uh, I did some uh, I, uh, communication science and arts. Where? I, at Morris Brown, Clark, uh, uh, or which Clark, one? Clark. Okay, and, and, shut and, out CAU, and, man. And, and uh, I was on the radio. I finished in my career. I was on Flavor in Your Ear with D. Matt, Urban Flo. I'm Uncle Ricky. Everybody Uncle. Uh, I was on uh, Flavor in Your Ear for about four years. <laughs> hey, man. Shout out to all my radio vets, hey, man. man. I was um I was a radio guy myself, man. Right, and so right. I interned at High 1079. I was kind of like a... You know, kind of like a superstar intern okay, or whatever. Cool, so, cool, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, man. So, so you know, how did things go left, man? How did we go from having a good childhood, private school, college, all this stuff? Uh, how did things go left? How do we get from there to like selling drugs? Uh, basically, I started. I went to California, like I told you, to school, and my roommate used to lay this magazine on the bed. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what started me selling drugs. Okay. My roommate used to lay this magazine on the bed. Right. And he used to literally dress like the picture on the magazine. Okay. I'm like, man, how the hell you do that? Like, he had this doom buggy. We used to go out to the beach to, to the lake. Hold on, real. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. We used to go out to the beach, man, and had this doom buggy where all the guys do surf, surf stuff and stuff like that. I'd be like, man, how you, how you do that, man? Like, I'm, I'm fucking working in the kitchen. I'm going to class. I'm buying used books off the bosom board. Like, nigga, you like, how you do this? And he showed me this drug called Crystal Man, and they was out on the beach and he used to sell crystal mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, and I seen how, how the drug just affect them, right? So, of course, I got into it and I brought it to the city of Atlanta when I came home. I used to work the club. Wait, so you're saying that you bought crystal meth to Atlanta? I did. Well, this was I what? mean, it was already here. I'm just saying, I, my roommate, Introduce you and you say you bought it back. Okay, okay I, I got, got some from me. I brought right, some right, back. Right, right, right back. Okay. See how it go. Okay. Um, so the Crystal Map game was real good, especially with the people downtown, the performers, and the people working on the buildings, the white boys. Mm -hmm. So it was the game was real good. But of course, being in the food service business, um, a lot of my myself used to snort a lot of cocaine. Mm -hmm. So I switched over from the Crystal Map game to the cocaine game. Okay. Raw cocaine. Then they started cooking it in a little glass beaker and bottle, and that's when it got wild. 
Yeah, that's that, that way. Once, once you add that, that once you add that baking soda and a little bit of water, life. Boy, you know what you do? Stop, yeah, I'm not a chemist. Add baking soda, whip it up. You know, I've heard. I've heard. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Don't, don't so, give me right. that. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I get it. So, what's going on? Okay, hold on. Alright. Uh oh. I, do I open this? Um, I got you. Okay. Yeah, we open it. Give me one second. Hey. Hey. All right. Appreciate it. this, That's both of you guys. And then it's just me. Okay, and I'll text you guys. Well, this is the office number. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll email you guys my information. Okay. All right, and all we'll right. definitely talk okay. and collab and do all this stuff. All right. Okay. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. All right. All right. What up, boss? We go. Y'all go down there. We about to move in a second. Okay. All right. All right, man. Go ahead, man. Sorry. So about you that. know, other than that, man, you know. Uh, it started like that, and then you know, uh, had my first child born, my my twins, Tiantre and Deontre. I don't know, my daughter was born when I was in high school, but then my son, and um, it moved there, man. I, I came up, I started working for some Mexicans. Um, what was you then, doing for the Mexicans? We're not gonna go that far, but well, here's the thing now. So I hooked up with some real, real good Mexicans, man. Okay. Oh, uh, in uh, uh, Custard Avenue, it's not there anymore. Um, I did 18 years in the Fed. We got caught. I used to sell a lot of drugs, man. What, what, and, what, was you get, what, what was you getting from the Mexicans? No, I was, uh, actually I was moving, I was smuggling. This all went bad. I was smuggling bodies. I was bringing people across the border. Bodies? Three, three checkpoints. So you was like a mule, like a, a I human? I just put in the car, man. Like, it's real. I don't know if we should do this on YouTube. Well, I mean, listen, man, it's, it's old, ago, right? Yeah, well, so watch this. So back in the 80s, man. <laughs> yo, so back in the 80s, man, uh, uh, I made real good money, man. I used to bring... Mexicans across the border, three checkpoints. Uh, you get a hundred back then. You get a thousand dollars a body as long as they living. Right. If you lose a body, you don't get paid. Right. Um, they had a way that they mal malnutrition themselves. They get real small, and they can fold themselves into the car seats. What? Only and hold their breath. Only the straws and stuff do the seats, man. And only just to make it across the checkpoint. Once you make it across the checkpoint, you pull over. They the come side. out. Come out and breathe, you know, you, you drive to the next part. Cause you know you had Texas, you had Arizona, Texas, and then you had the border, of course. So you make it past those three checkpoints, you good. So and how most of the time, if you make it past checkpoint one and two, the third one takes it, I mean it's it's easy to sell it, yeah. So how often would people not make it, like pass away? Uh you know, I only lost a couple of bodies. What would you do with them? I mean do I'm gonna try to go. Oh shit. <laughs> What, I mean, what else do we Wow, wow. That's, wow. I didn't expect to hear all this. Okay, yeah, it's man. It's all gangster, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and you did 18 years, so you're saying that you was doing that stuff once you came out? Absolutely. Well, before, that's what it sent me. Okay, so that's what got you put into the 18 years. Part of it. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. And so, I guess ever since you've gotten out, you've kind of been, you know, on, in your addiction and everything else. Yeah, um, in my addiction, coming out, I had a nine-year cleaning so the same home group, same sponsor. Um, then I had an incident with my parents, um, and uh, it just took me. What straight. happened with your parents? So my mom got murdered uh, at Wendy Cater on Covenant Highway. Um, wow. I was at work on the south side, and I was still in, in uh, recovery. Um, everybody from my home group and a couple people on recovery, they came out to my job and got me. My dad showed up out there to pick me up as well. Um, so on the way home, I was telling my dad, all right, man, it's me and you, love, baby, you got it. Um, so I asked my dad, the crazy thing is on the way there, I was like, Dad, you know, I, I became an ordained, licensed minister. And uh, my dad could I preach my mom funeral. He was like, yeah, he said, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna preach the way you can preach my funeral too. But I was like, yeah, well, I mean, it's cool, Dad. Um, we walked in the hall, man. He took four steps and he dropped dead right there on the spot. Wait, what? He he walked in the house. It took about 45 minutes to get home. My dad dropped dead right there on the spot. And um, your mom had just died? Yeah, she, she was murdered. Why was she murdered? So somebody broke into the house on Covenant Highway. She came in through the back and she was coming. They they didn't know she was home. And it was a uh, home invasion. Wow. And they broke into the house and, you know, um, Whatever it was, whatever. Mm. But, so this is my third year coming up, man. It's like every Thanksgiving, 
New Year's, Christmas, birthday. It's probably tough, man. So like this is my third year, man, and um You know, um, it's like every 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 year me and my dad had the same birthday and um mm. birthday coming up, man. And see, just 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 last couple weeks ago, my shit was out of control, like you see my hair and stuff. And I had a lot of unknown stress and I didn't pay attention to the, the man like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, then my mom's birthday, then the, then the funeral was in January, then you got Valentine's Day. That shit was crazy. Hmm. Wow. <sighs> yeah, man. Sounds like a lot, man. Um, but, do you say that you also have HIV? I don't have HIV for uh, 38 years. For 38 years? No. How did you, when did you, so? Never had full blown AIDS. Right. Now, one thing about it, let me tell you this, much. I might be on the dope every now and then, get on, get on. But I take my medication. You take the HIV medication? What the hell? And I'm a pioneer for the HIV community. Uh, I'm in the Pause Magazine. Pause Magazine is HIV magazine as well. I, you know, I'm a LGBTQRSA. I'm an ally for that community, which um. What's the A stand for? Ally. Okay. All day, you know. Okay. And uh, it used to be A and S S. Well, how you, but how, how you ally if you finessing them now? <laughs> you know, you I know. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. You know, I don't take advantage of. How, how did you? How did you contract HIV? Well, back in the day, I used to sell a lot of drugs, man, and I used to sell uh, works and heroin. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you be in a house, well, of course I stick around and stay at the house where they shoot the dope. Okay. Um, there was a fight broke out. You know, of course me trying to try to fight. I got stuck with a nigga right here. See this? See that finger? Yeah. And I'm going to my eye. Should be some bad scars. I still see him. Anyway, my hand swelled up and swelled up, and I put pole rock side on it, wash it off, wrap it in an ace bandage. And of course, I go back in the trap the next day. Hand kept swelling up. All my fingers turned, all this turned black. So eventually, my girl was like, "Yo, man, you need to go to the doctor." A couple of weeks later, the guy who got into the fight, he got real, real sick. Stomach started blowing up. They said he had that package. Back in the day, it was the package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one AIDS, one HIV, it was the, the bomb. Mm -hmm. So I went to the doctor, found out I had, I thought I was going to die the next day. Of course, I did. How did you feel when you got that diagnosis? I thought I was going to die the next day. Every day I woke up, I thought I was going to die. That's mm -hmm. how I feel. So when I told my family and my parents, um, you got to understand what I went through. The family reunions and stuff like that, I had to, I had to use paper plates. Everybody knew real quick. Wow. Um, yeah, that was back in I could, the day. I could, I, could, I could find myself going in the bathroom. I wash my hands, and my little brother would go in the bathroom with some tissue and take the soap and throw it in the trash. You know, just the soap. How did that make you feel, man? I mean, a lot of times I would help him. You know, like, hey, man, move that, man. You know, this. Don't drink all that glass. Give me a paper cup. Mm. I would help him. But how did it really make you feel? Turn all this off. Hey, man, do your thing. Yeah. Well, back in the day when it first started, it was kind of embarrassing. But I just didn't, I thought I was going to die the next, every day I just thought I was going to die the next day. So they gave us this medicine back in the day called AZT. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people and the doctors did not know what to do with it. They just gave it to you. They didn't know how to take it. It was an you know, orange juice solution. I started seeing people, hair get real curly, some of them get real black. So I'm gonna get a real big old stomach. Mm -hmm. So bro, guess what? I stopped taking it all the way around the clock. Right. You stopped taking it? Stop. Yeah. And then why, why did you stop taking it? Nigga, I seen the- Seen all the BS happening to other right. people. <laughs> right. So, so I just said, I'm gonna just try to exercise, eat a bunch of vegetables. Right. So I drunk some bleach, I'll never forget. I drunk some bleach, man. I put bleach in, in some water and drunk it. My whole lungs collapsed, right? <gasps> right. Right. I thought I was gonna just pure my system, dummy. But at the end of the day, man, um, I got back into the to the system. By, by, I went to, when I went to prison. Right. Of course, they put you on the meds. Right. And it went AZT then. So I started taking Comerbeer and Zyzen back in the day. And as I started taking the medicine, uh, I, I must, my T cells never dropped or whatever. So as I started taking the medicine, um, my health got much, much, much better. Right. 
Um, and then I realized the life expectancy spans on the HIV. Right. It's, 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 it ain't like like it was back in the day. Right. See, HIV is only a virus. Mm-hmm. AIDS. Right. Is is the actual is a, is a disease. Right. Right. It's like you can have a stomach virus or the mumps or the measles. Mm -hmm. Um. It's just a virus. Right. If you if you maintain the virus, you'll be okay. Right. You get the disease, you're done. Right. So um, I'm real grateful that um. Wow. Have. So you didn't even contract HIV from sex. No, 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 no. You contracted it from a but needle in a fight. fight. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, man. All right, but y'all understand? After that, I only had three children. I only had five children. And none of and them had, had HIV. HIV. My, my wife. Oh. All my children. You know okay, man. So. All right. Well, listen, man. Listen. Listen, we really appreciate you, man, taking the time, answering all of our questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, if anybody out there, because we know that you said that you're starting work on Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats, man. Appreciate Big congrats it, for that. It. So, um, so you know, if anybody out there did want to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? I don't, but um, uh, I'm, on, I'm Jazzy Ship 101 uh, on Instagram. Um, I got a place over at the Welcome House, two, three. Don't you gotta give us the Wait, wait, welcome out. And, uh, <laughs> I, know. I, I said over there, like, you know, donate. You can send an envelope over there, drop it in, drop it in the mailbox, Ricky Brown. Okay, Simple. man. And if they wanted to reach out, they could uh, Instagram Jazzy Chef 101, right? Yep. Okay. With a Jazzy, J A Z Z E Y C H E F, right? Okay, 101. Gotcha. Absolutely. All right, man. Listen, man. We really appreciate you, my boy. I want y'all to stay in touch, man, because, um, of course, I got my own catering thing going on, and I'm, this is just the beginning. Yeah, like, man, listen, I'll be Phoenix back. rising, man. Phoenix rising. Look, man, so. I got the press. <laughs> yeah. 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 It ain't finished. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it ain't finished. Yeah. 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 He done yet. Yeah. Y'all see the player, man. Hey, player, man. man. <laughs> you know, sometimes clean clothes and a haircut will change a person's whole man, person. Uh, listen, a hundred times a hundred. You yeah. feel me? Right. Like, that is what it takes sometimes, man. It's just a, a haircut and a, a change of clothes, man. Especially if you put on a suit. Right. Man, you get a haircut, you put on a suit, you're a whole different man. Oh. So, <laughs> hey, like I say, man, really appreciate you. Definitely wishing nothing but the best, all right? Thank you so much. My boy, my Love boy. Love you guys. All man. right. Hey, man, y'all probably don't remember me, man, but this jazz is chill, man. You know, <laughs> hit, hit, us, hit us with the 360. I'm with you. Hit us with the 360 real right, quick. Right, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> man. That boy feeling, hey, chill, chill. That boy no, feeling new, no, ain't it? I hung out with the cut dog that my man right here. Hey, man. It's the only popping. Shout it out, man. We love it, man. All right, my boy. All right, be good out here, my boy. You too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs>